Helpless without you. I am helpless without you. Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Blessed be the soon coming of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> He got me. I didn't know you. I'm still going to go live. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love her so much. Shalom. Good to see you guys. Hey, Amen. I hope it's not too dark. Let's see. The coming of the Lord. So I'm going to show you how much lighting. It don't look like we're sitting in the dark or not. It's just our, our bubble down. Yeah, that one's going to be. Like six, six light bulbs in here, three of them. Yeah, it. Amen. Let's pray right out a blessed week. It's been our minute since we've been on. Lord uh, willing, we'll you know, catch up on some of the messages. No, it's just turn this on. Extra background like bing. Bing. She went right up to jump. I know we just doing all this kind of adjusting, y'all. Right, beforehand, but uh, yeah. Let's do it now, here. Yeah. Let's see. 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 let let Oh, you mean, uh... Testimony. You know we do testimony before we get started? Oh. No, go ahead, brother. No, you ahead. usually do the testimony. Tell them about your new adventure, all that stuff. You know what's going on? Tell them about your life, Sister Connie. Sister Roberts. This is Marriage Ministry. Kingdom Marriages Matter. Monday. Well, before I, um... I guess it's more so... A testimony for women. I'm going to be quite so clear. Got my words from the first one since he's insisting that I give testimony. Amen. I never hold my testimony back from the Lord. I always have to give him the honor, the praise, and the glory. In my name, Jesus. Um, yeah. So, uh, I want to thank God first. Give honor to God, my beautiful, wonderful Father, my beautiful Creator who sent our Lord and Savior Jesus and he laid down his life and resurrected on the third day and he sits at the right hand of God our Father yeah. and we have the gift of the Holy Spirit so um, I'm on this all glory be to Christ I'm on this new journey with uh, natural hair uh, growth and actually feeding my hair um, the way God intended so way with the you know, wigs and stuff like that. And I say a testimony for the women in part two because I can just speak for myself. I thought that I had to have all this different kind of $400 lace fronts or like full lace or whatever. It was human hair, don't get me wrong. But um, praying to get against the generational curse and, and yes, I mean, I thank God for delivering me from that generational curse. And I mean, as of now, I just want to let the women know, like, don't be afraid to, to show the true beauty that God gave you. You know, don't be afraid to show the true beauty that God gave you. Trust him with that, uh, that weakness. Because for a long time, I had just accepted it. And um, now I've been doing, doing the routine, all glory be to Christ. I make my own hair butter and then the oils and I mix less oil with it with frankincense and myrrh and some other oils. And it, it, it's been working really well. I just thank God for the progress. And um, also, uh, the Lord has blessed me to get on another mission, which I don't have to work, but I always tell my husband, I say, well, if there's any missions out there in the field, I know the Lord will allow it to go through. 
So like I was doing in uh, orientation today, um, uh, I stood up and told him, I said, I can't, I couldn't find, after I introduced myself, I said, I couldn't find any trace uh, on the job platforms where I was just applying. I couldn't find any trace of where I had a, applied for the job. But um, I told him, I said, I know the Lord has sent me here. And, um, you know, it's all about the souls. It ain't about the, the, the pay. It ain't about nothing but the souls. Everything else is added provision from the Lord. So this is not number one, not number two, but number three uh, mission that the Lord has blessed me to uh, encounter that is within eight minutes or even five minutes from my husband's job. So, uh, all glory be to Christ. Amen. I'm excited for the souls. This is going to be amazing. Amen. I'm going to jump in on the, on the end of her testimony, but I'm going to be a little salty. Ah, oh, here we go. Check this out. Let me show you how good God is and how favor is not fair, right? My wife has a degree in nursing. She retired from being a nurse to come do what I do, working at warehouses. I've been doing this for roughly about 25 years probably six years of college education all this experience and she's been doing this about a year and a half and she's already <laughs> stop laughing it's not funny okay i'm being emotional right now okay okay she jumped in a year and a half and she's already a lead making the same money i make somebody tell me that's not fair <laughs> i need somebody to agree with me right now this is not right but see, he don't. And he he has to understand when God shines the favor, it's it's on us. Oh, We're one. You better be glad. We better be glad you're sharing that money because we we have a problem. <laughs> now, well, I'll just like, decide though. It is, that, that is I have some my wife. The Lord showed my, my wife favor, not just her, but a lot of you know, brothers and sisters in Christ that truly walk with the Lord. God shows that favor. My wife does not even. She has no education in running warehouses. She has no. Not a, a whole lot of experience, but God put her in a position where she's leading people that have been doing this for years. And I've been doing this 20 plus years. I've had the privilege and the blessing to be run warehouses, to be leads, be you know, supervisors, things like that. But God opened the door for her to do it because she's faithful over the missions when she gets there. Not just It's not just about the money and the job. It's about the, the opportunity to witness to people. And that she'll do. That part, yes. I will go in like the left hand assassin. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. But... Thank you, Brother Jason. Love it you took, too. Yes, we love the Lord. Love you guys. Tell us, please, I said hi. Um, the thing about it I forgot to say was when I went into this uh, hiring event, because uh, mind you, the okay, when I first put in the application, they said, oh, you know, well, we carefully, you know, you get that dummy email artificially generated. Well, we carefully reviewed your resume. At this time, we're going to go to someone else. And you know what my response was? I said, okay, Jesus Christ is Lord, and he's in control. God is in control. I think that's what I said. I'm mm -hmm. paraphrasing. And so they sent another message back. Well, come and join us for a hiring event. Long story short, I was just explaining to another lady uh, how it was when I was nursing. and I wasn't one of them stuck-up nurses. I would always help my, my CNAs to um, get the job done. I wasn't afraid to go in there and help bathe the patient or or to, I wouldn't think I was too good to, or above that to go and clean them or help bathe them or whatever, just help my, my uh, aides out or however. So mind you, I go in there, he didn't tell you why I really got into warehousing. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to play on the forklift. <laughs> yeah, she used to no. my job and I trained her out of the forklift and all that before yeah. she even applied for a warehouse job. Yeah. So, so um, when I go in there, and I eventually ended up getting certified in my last job, the last mission, and the reach truck cherry picker and the uh, what was that one? Pallet jack? Electric pallet jack? Yeah, I was right. But so I went in initially to do forklift for this current mission. And I said, I, you know, I'll learn shipping and receiving. I just wanted to possibly try something new. But see, when God has something for you, you got to learn how to hold your tongue before you talk yourself or out of the mission. That's my thing. I'm just excited to be used by the Lord. Our glory be to Christ. So the guy, the guy, he said, so what are you applying for? And I said, for clear for either shipping and receiving. So he said, okay. And then when he walked me over to the interview, he sat me down in front of the guy. He said, she's applying for lead. 
And I was about to say, no, I'm not. But I turned in like this, and it's like the Holy Spirit had my mouth like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you better be quiet. First step first. Mm-hmm. So, ended up, the guy, you know, it, it was just the work of the Lord. It wasn't none of me. It was the work of the Lord. And just, you know, I thank God um, for the souls. I'm excited for the witnessing opportunities. Amen. That's all it's about. The Bible says we're only what we do for the kingdom will last. Right here. We have to come to the understanding that these jobs, no matter how much they pay, they don't come to an end sooner or later. Yeah. But the souls, where people go for eternity, it's, never, it's not going to end. It's going to be permanent where we go for eternity. So we got to be concerned about the souls. Amen. And I thank God for, you know, using my wife and me as well uh, for any type of mission, wherever it may be, whether it's at work or out in the streets at the park, you know. Come to the point now where everything's a mission for us. We just... We may sit down and have dinner and end up talking to the waitress or waiter or whatever. Or just wherever the Lord leads us. There's nothing. You know, we don't go out without being prepared. Because the Bible says be prepared in season and out of season. Amen. To be able to win souls and witness for the Lord. So we always try to stay prepared. I'm not saying we always are. Sometimes we get caught off guard too. But for the most part, we're usually out there ready and willing to talk to whoever about the Lord. So that was an awesome testimony. I was just talking about the job part, but she gave you, the, you know, the natural part as well. That, that's just another blessing that... God is blessing us to get back to the way they used to do things in the Bible. See, the world has us brainwashed into thinking that pharmacy and medicine and all those things that come from the hospital and from doctors, that's good for you. It's not. Mm-hmm. God never created that stuff. He never intended that stuff to go into our bodies. They didn't use it in the Bible. The only thing that they used in the Bible, if you look up Luke, who was, one of the, who was a physician in the Bible, the only thing he used was natural natural uh, herbs and things from things from nature, as they were, not, not you know, genetically modified or chemically modified. But he used natural things, and most importantly, once they got baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, they used the Holy Spirit to, to heal and to save and to deliver. Amen. And that's what we need to all. That's what the church needs. The true church needs to get back to the people that it's not too late for. The remnant that's left, we need to get back to those things, those biblical principles, and get away from trusting medicine, and trusting vitamin. I mean, uh, aspirin and all the stuff that's man-made and chemically modified. And again, I know everybody's not on that spiritual level. You know, I had a the Lord had to grow me to that level because I, I used to take medicine for a long time for high blood pressure for, from age 18 until probably about three and a half years ago. So I'm not judging anybody that does it, but I'm just telling you, the Lord has a better way. Um, point blank period. We don't take any type of pharmacia. Everything we do is natural. Um, the Lord heals everything. My little nephew, uh, every once in a while he gets sick, and the Lord always blesses him to get healed. First and foremost, through prayer. Um, and then we'll give him stuff like vitamins or elderberries, stuff like that. And, Usually his, his symptoms usually only last maybe half a day whenever he comes over. So like I said, all glory to Christ, like we're learning this new adventure. But that's, a, that's another subject for another day. Today is marriage ministry. We're going to talk about the reasons God made marriage. See, the world wants to try to twist marriage and make it seem like it's a bad thing, like it's a curse. But marriage is a blessing. It's not a curse. God made marriage because it was to bless the, it was to bless the man. Because in the beginning, it was just added by itself. And he blessed him with a woman. This was his wife. So, you know, of course, you got Tyler Perry and those people that want to make movies like, Why Did I Get Married? And, of course, in the movie, they make it like marriage is such hell on earth. And that's a lot from the pit of hell. If you have a truly oh, sorry. Um, hell <laughs> godly marriage, hey, that, that's making it dark now. Oh, sorry. Got to the behind us. Huh? Got behind us. Yeah. Like, oh, it's dark. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, God made marriage because it was a good thing, not because it's supposed to be a punishment. A lot of people in the world now try to treat marriage like it's a punishment or like it's a, you know, I mean, sentenced to death, <laughs> pretty much. Like, they, oh, I've been, I've been married 15 years, I feel like, you know, nah, marriage is a, bl- a blessed thing. It's a wonderful thing to me and my wife, anyway. I don't know about anybody else. Hopefully all the marriages, that, the kingdom marriages, hope y'all feel the same way about your spouse. But I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't, take it to the Lord. I mean, we can't tell you how to feel if there's a, truly a problem there, y'all need to you know, get before the Lord, talk to each other, communicate, which we always been talking about. We all need to get better at communicating. Even us, we get the times where we have to say, sit down and say, okay, we need to be able to uh, you know, communicate better and understand each other better. I mean, because things can be taken in the whole wrong direction just based on either the tone of your voice or sometimes what you say. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not what you say, but how you say it, usually. Right. Sometimes it can be what you say. Like, you know, I've seen couples call each other names and they, you know, they call it joking, but like, we don't joke like that. That's not mm-hmm. To me, that's not funny. Um, if you think that's funny mm-hmm. to call your wife the B-word or y'all call each other names, hey, I can say that. 
I don't think God honors it, but I mean, hey, whatever you decide to do is up to you. And you and God. Um, it's not as, like the terms of endearment, but if you call your wife sweetie, that's not. I'm not referring to those type of names, obviously. No, no one that's vulgar in court. Amen. So the reasons God made marriage is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. I mean, I'm sure there's many more, but we're going to touch on nine pretty, pretty important, um, pretty important biblical reasons why God created marriage. You know, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't created for, you know, for you to be in discord, for y'all to be at each other's throat. God made it supposed to, your house is supposed to be a place of peace. Right? Amen. Before we get started, you want to add anything to that? Well, I mean, not just a, a, a place of peace, but a place of showing that agape love to to each other, the love of God, the love that counts. Because I don't want to show him my love. Uh -uh, my love is of an old man that was nailed to the cross with Jesus and, 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 and need to stay dead. Mm -hmm. My old man, Jesus was respect um, but we are to, to to use ask the Lord to fill us with the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is a spirit of love God's agape love Amen. and this is why Jesus gave, gave gave his life for the for the bride he laid down his life and resurrected again so that we could have access to that agape love the Holy Spirit which is the spirit of love God's love never fails and, you know, if you don't, if you're not showing your spouse that love and cherishing them while they're here, because remember, there's no marriage in heaven. Ain't going to be no one running around looking for my husband. No, I'm, everybody going to have, everybody that I'll, I'll go be the Christ get in, going to be, their hunger and their thirst is going to be for the Lord. That love for the Lord is going to be like fire like no other, like a, a, a wonderful, wonderful, eternal Holy Spirit fire. Amen. Marriage to the Lamb. So, you know, cherish your, cherish your spouse while they're here. Wives, understand, understand your role as the, as the help me. And, you know, like he'll come home, he won't ask. Sometimes if he's real tense, he'll be like, oh. you know, he'll do the little, try, like he try to give himself a massage. I'm like, sweetie, you want to give me a massage? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like um, doing something that he want to do, uh, alternating or however because if it's up to him he'll do what I want to do all the time and mm -hmm. I, he know I'm not going for that <laughs> he'll be like mm -hmm. okay sweetie you know mm -hmm. so just know that yeah like he, like he was saying marriage is, is it's really a blessing I mean ever since I was a little girl I always wanted to be married amen it's in our nature there you go help me was in my nature it was in my DNA being the, being the, the head is supposed to be in our nature but you know the world tries to Again, you got to turn off the television. If you, if you watch the Tyler Perry, why did I get married? And all that, which I used to watch that when I was in the world. And they, give, they, give you, they try to give you their opinion of what marriage should be. Like, Y'all should be at each other's throat, cussing each other out, breaking stuff, and it's okay. That's that's a healthy marriage. That's not, mm -hmm. not in any way, shape, or form healthy. And the Bible says that as well. That's not a healthy marriage. It says it's better for a man to dwell in the wilderness than to live with a contentious woman. Mm -hmm. So if God said that, then why do you think this lady that plays a role on why did I get married? Who's crazy? You know, trying to kill this guy every chance he gets, or you know, cussing him out. Why, why do you think that's healthy? It's not. The movies, the movies are supposed to be for entertainment, but really, it's the enemy's playing the seed in your mind. See, that's why we married. I promise you, I was saying that. Yeah, I just, I, just did, I was boost. thinking it when I when I was thinking it, I was about to. Start, there you go. So yeah. see. Everything the seed. Everything the devil does in Hollywood is to plant a seed. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna see too much positive positivity spoken about marriage. You're not. Everything is people getting divorced. People. You know, the, uh, what's it called? The hand that rocked the cradle. All these different crazy movies about marriage. It, it's letting you know, just plant the seed in my mind, or, or wives with knives, stuff like that. I mean, all these crazy shows. Yeah, you, you used to watch them. No, I had to get. Uh, the Lord has delivered me from so much. I mean, well, you know, my husband, he, he'll tell you when we were dating. It, it was a little bit after we got married too, because we were still a little warm until we chose to begin to walk with. Yeah, we don't watch any of those things anymore. I used to watch uh, Deadly Women and, and Wives with Knives. Like, you know, learning from Brother Prince, what we feed ourselves spiritually, it could sow a seed that won't birth until years later if that person haven't gave their life to Christ. 
Then they wonder why they got murder on their mind. Or they wonder why they got this, whatever on their mind, you know, after after sowing another seed, sowing another seed. Because that's all the enemy want to do is sow them subconscious seeds, yeah. them sneaky seeds. Yeah. Let me tell you about a seed that was sown just from one term that was in a movie that stuck with everybody forever. And I'm, I'm guilty of it, too. Like, even now, I still occasionally I'm saying my wife, but like, that's not, that's not the proper name for the shirt. Remember what's love got to do with it? Oh yeah, I can't stand the name people call their shirt. It's okay. The, the little tank top that I used to wear, they call it a wife beater. And I, everybody's adopted that term. It's like that's that's just like a, a term that naturally comes out when you see a tank top. Hey, I, I gotta go give me a couple of wife beaters, you know, stuff like that. And it's like if you think about it, that's not that's not a good term because he used to beat on his wife. But people accept it because the movie made it popular. Mm -hmm. Because I well, I love you, slap you around, go bring you some flowers. That's that's accept that's a healthy relationship. To, to America, to the, really to the world. I mean, it happens all over the world. Uh, men beating their wives and the women, you know, accepting it. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. God said the man's supposed to love the wife as Christ loved the church and gave his life for the church. So that don't mean I'm trying to take her life. That means I'm willing to lay down my life for her. You see what I'm saying? You see how the world tries to twist it up though? Amen. And again, I, I had to repent too because that seed didn't plant in my mind. It's a white beat. It's no big deal. It's just a, it's just a term. And I was really sowing a seed to other people. In your own mind, it's okay to, to use that term. It's okay to be a white people. You, know, you see how, how slick the devil is, how crafty is, you know, some of the things that he puts out is, is so minor to people. It's like, you know, it's not, that's not a big deal. But in reality, it is. So, yeah, be careful what we feed our spirit man. It's like my wife was saying, Brother Prince was saying, be careful what you feed your spirit man because what goes in is going to come out. Mm -hmm. if you get upset, the Bible says, when, you, when you're when you going to find out, you're really going to be tested on. You'll walk with glory when, when things get tough, not when things are easy. Like it's easy for us to pray and thank God. Now we got all you know, lights on, money in the bank, and food in the refrigerator, a nice running vehicle, and all that stuff. Everything's great then. But what do people do when they when they down and out? They want to blame God, they want to curse God, they want to say, "Oh, it's God's fault. Well, God made me buy this, this the house I couldn't afford, and now I was getting you know I'm getting foreclosed." No, you bought a house you couldn't afford. God God provided for you. It's up to you to use that money or whatever to. To determine what you can afford to do with it. God's not going to sit, sit there and lay out a plan for you. He'll give you, he'll, the Holy Spirit will function you what to do and what not to do, but if you don't listen, if I shall live by my means, that's not because God planned that for me, it's because I chose to do it. So and that's pretty much all of America. <laughs> People go make 100000 and they'll spend 500000 You know, house, car, all the stuff they, they, that they'll be paying for forever. So really, education has really been made meaningless in, in America because everybody lives by their means. You got people that make fifteen dollars an hour that make that live better than people that make a hundred thousand a year because they because all about how they manage their money and how they listen to the Lord and say no you don't need that Lexus you can go get that Honda and get to just, you know get the same result. So Amen. take from point A to point B. You gotta have a Tesla that you know everybody's getting it. Everybody got the Tesla truck that costs a half a million dollars and they can't even figure out how to get get in and out of it half the time. People getting locked in them, they blowing up, you know, all kind of crazy stuff happening with these cars. Give me an old car. I take a '57 Chevy. It's paid for. We got to open the doors, roll down the windows. I'm cool with them. But again, that's because I've learned over the years. Anyway, we're gonna get into this wonderful Bible study: the reasons God made marriage. So we're gonna pray in. Lord willing, to bless somebody's marriage. If it doesn't, it's gonna bless ours. Like that. We can talk to the screen all day long. If people listen, that's fine. If they don't, okay. That's between, that's between them and God. So we love y'all. We pray that this message is uh, edifying to the body of Christ and the, and the kingdom marriages. The kingdom marriages to me. Amen. Can you just take that one and put it over here somewhere? Sure. Good afternoon. Can you entertain the people? Sure. I'll be back in just a minute. I gotta do some husband stuff. <laughs> I should have asked him before we started, but I wasn't thinking, you know. You need a towel? Just, uh, you, can you want to use this? Or you got something? So, um, women, I, um, I pray that, that all is well. And, um, what is it good to share? I shared this on another one before our glory be to Christ, but whenever, if, if there's a disagreement or whatever with your spouse, and then, of course, that's the time when the enemy wants to come in 
to try to sow those seeds of negative thoughts about your spouse. You have to cast them down right away. Because if not, that's another way the enemy subconsciously sows those evil seeds. Don't let people call you either or, or uh, being energy vampires or however the case is. You know, all of your energy that God bless you to be able to have to witness to other people. Because, I mean, they'll do it. I experienced it one time when I was in a store and I was witnessing to uh, a lady, but she had me in front of the store. I could barely got worried in edgewise. She was talking like a whole hour and a half, and I was like, Lord, why did I let her do that? But I knew what it was for because, oh, yeah, that worked wonders. You can, you can turn this off. <laughs> Husband duties, there you go. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> right. The Lord said, let there be light. Fix the problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, I finished. I'm sorry. I want to talk No, no. I was just sharing the, um, sharing with the, the help me for wives that any negative thoughts that they have the enemy try to plant in the midst of a, a disagreement or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. cast those thoughts down right away. Mm -hmm. You don't want that to be the outlook you have with your husband, wives, and same thing for husbands. Yep. The Bible says cast down every wicked thought or imagination that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. And everything that is in this Bible, which is supposed to think about your spouse or your marriage, if it's anything other than that, you're supposed to cast it down because it goes against the knowledge of God. Amen. So again, this is just these are just biblical principles that anybody can study. We're not teachers. I'm not a pastor. I haven't been to seminary, cemetery, burial, or whatever you go to college school. Um, and we're not, you know, formally educated as the world would like you to be. But we have the Holy Spirit, the greatest teacher ever. So. Got you now, truth. This is something that we encourage other people to go pick up yourself and read for yourself. That way, you're not, you, know, you can't stand before God and blame me because you if you took bad advice. It's coming out here, so I know it's not bad advice. Amen. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful word today, this wonderful Bible study. We pray that the seed is not able to be taken up by the enemy. Uh, we pray that any marriage that is uh, kingdom marriage or kingdom marriage to be, we pray that they will uh, be edified by this word, Lord, and that they will go and study to show themselves approved. Um, decrease us and increase you, Lord. Bless, our, bless the words that come out of us to be from you and not from us. Not, not my own opinion, not my own. Uh, thoughts or my own interjections but the word of God and elaborated by the Holy Spirit through through our words in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the rock. All right, why? See that movie? Why did why did I get married? Well, let me we're gonna break it down to you in the Bible. Why? The reasons God made marriage. And number one is gonna be come out of Genesis chapter two, verse eighteen. We'll be reading, reading from the King James Version. I flipped right to it. Amen. 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 Glory to Christ. <laughs> Genesis 2 and 18. The first reason that God made marriage was to eliminate loneliness. All right, Sister Kind, let's elaborate on why God created marriage to eliminate loneliness. Genesis 3, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 18. This will be the Holy Book of Genesis. It says, And the Lord, and from the King James Version, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. Yeah. Amen. And if you read on, it tells you how you know, what he made to help me out of. It says, and out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast. I mean, it just explains the, the, the whole, the, what's it called? The order, pecking order. I guess Adam was first, and then he created all the beasts in the field. And then he said Adam, he didn't want Adam to be alone. So he wanted to, to eliminate Adam's loneliness. So he said, I'm going to give him a help me. He, and that's when he... That's when God, the Almighty God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the greatest Lord and Savior there is, the only Lord and Savior. That's when he did the first surgery without any medicine. It says he caused Adam to, to go into a deep sleep. And then he opened up his side and pulled out a rib. That's why they call the wife our rib, because they come from a man's rib. Fair enough? Amen. What do you think about that, Sister Scott? Amen. Did it, does it eliminate loneliness? Did, when, you, when you feel... Um, you know, overwhelmed or whatever, is it good to come home to somebody to talk to? Oh, of course. Is it good to have somebody that you know you, you can talk to and 
to hide and knowing they're not going to run back and tell all their buddies or you know, talk about you behind your back? No, oh, definitely. It's, it's a wonderful thing to have that that bond, you know. And even if, even if you know, you don't feel like you have to say it, like I, I tell my husband all the time, I say, you're my vacation. <laughs> That's what she says. So I tell her all kinds of stuff. You're my homeboy, you're my road dog, you're my best friend, you're my confidant, you're my counselor. Oh, Jesus is my counselor. I'll be being funny when I say that. She gives me wise counsel from the Lord. So Amen. Thing. That's what we got to do. We got to make sure we're taking wise counsel from people that are hearing from the Lord, that are praying for you, not somebody that's going to give you their own opinion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your marriage on the rocks, huh? Come on, let's go drink and look for some women. See? That's the best advice I can give you. No, well, that's not good advice. Sorry. I'm going to stay away from that advice. My wife, my, my rock, God forbid, if my wife, my, my marriage was on the rocks, I'm going to go to the Lord, <laughs> not, to, not to another man. Who is Especially, the rock of our salvation. Amen. There you go. Especially another man that's probably single or, or unhappy himself because he you know, got divorced or whatever it is. No thanks, I'll pass. Yeah, my women stay with me, my little girlfriends too. I'm going to go talk to my girlfriend about what we got going on in my house. But she's single, ain't got no man, she got to hire your man. Mm. All kinds of stuff going on. You know, oh, yeah, girl, go and leave him. He ain't no good. As soon as you do, how do you end up dating my ex husband? Because mm. you let him go. That part. All right. Number two is to have help. God created man. God, one of the reasons God made marriage was for us to have help. You know, women, I know the women of the world today are brainwashed by the world, by TV. I don't need no man. I could do it by myself. Which is, for the most part, you can. I mean, a lot of people can live on their own forever and be okay. Um, is it is it always comfortable? No. I mean, is it always conducive to you know, be, be by yourself and try to do man and woman things? I mean, trying to fix stuff around the house. I mean, you know, that's not God to create women to do that. That's just reality. People can look at it, take that comment however they want. I'm saying what the Bible says. God didn't create women to, to work 75 hours a week. Uh, God didn't create men to be homemakers and stay at the house while women don't work. That's not how it works. You know, there's some, some people, if, that's work, if that works for them, hey, I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Don't get mad at me. I'll shoot the message. The mess, the mess, talk to the man who made the message. Amen. I don't think you want to fight with him. But if you do, hey, good, good luck. So Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 and 10. So God created marriage to have first half of Point number two. Got it? Mm -hmm. And read. <laughs> oh. I just want to say that. It's mm -hmm. really not nice. Can you read, please? Just check on it. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Let's be the Holy Book of Ecclesiastes, King James Version. It says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Hmm. No help. So we all created marriage so that we have help. When my wife stumbles, I'm supposed to be there to help her lift her up. Okay. When I stumble, I'm supposed to be there to lift me up. It doesn't work one way, it works both ways. If you're in a good marriage, a godly marriage, you it always, it always see it manifest itself in some way or the other. Because God made both of us different. He made her strong around me. He made me strong where she was. Amen. That's how it's supposed to be. That wasn't an accident. God doesn't want you to be total opposites, but he don't want you to be the same either. Because it's like, uh, if, if my wife had all the manly traits and everything I got, then I might as well marry a man. Right? And God ain't having that either. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I wasn't taking a shot at them, but I'm just telling you. That's what the Bible says. Again, LGBTQ don't talk to me. Talk to God. Pretty soon they're gonna, they've already tried to outlaw this Bible. And they're doing it in many states because of that reason right there, because the devil wants to open up the door, Pandora's box to homosexuality and all that, and they, they get mad when we tell the truth. Now, I'm not saying I hate you. I'm not saying I, you know, I'm judging you. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. The Bible says God made man and woman. Not man and man, not woman and woman. It's the truth. Sorry. Not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Mm -hmm. God made marriage for love, point number three. 1 John 4 and 7. Looking for love in all the wrong places. 
Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful word. Amen. This is wonderful. Is that first John? First John four and seven. Right. Oh, I got a second John. You sure? Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I was looking at Peter. Uh, I was looking at Peter. Uh -huh. I got it. I got it. <laughs> well, I said, I'm going to reach this guy. You want me to read it? You want me to read it? It's so sweet. Sweet it on the camera. <laughs> See how quick that was? Give it to me. I'm about to give it to you right now. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. God made marriage for love. He says we are to love, let us love one another. Amen. What does it say the greatest commandment is? Love. But you notice it wasn't written with the Ten Commandments, but the Lord said it was the greatest. The greatest. So if you don't understand there's more than just Ten Commandments. Those are just the main ones that God was focused on because they're very important. All of them are important. Those are the ones that he wanted Moses to write, Moses to write in the Mosaic Law. There's other commandments. The greatest commandment is love. People will say, that's not a commandment. It's, the Bible says that's the greatest commandment. <laughs> so why would he say it if it's not? So again, you have to have spiritual eyes and ears to understand what, what's going on in the Bible. Yeah. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit teaching us because when I was a heathen, I would have thought the same thing. Like, that's not, that's not a commandment. But God said it's the greatest commandment, so how is it not a commandment? Amen. Amen. God made love, point number four, for sacrifice. And before we go to that scripture, Jesus said, Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave, you know, gave his life for it. So that is a sacrifice. The greatest sacrifice is to lay down your life. Now, when, when you send you know, that, so husbands, you're not saying necessarily always literally laying down your life, but you got to lay down the old life. You got to lay down being a player. I got to lay down going to the strip club. I got to lay down, you know, have a roller decks full of women. You got to lay that stuff down. That's why you, that's what you mean by lay down your life, your former life. You are a new creature, a new creature in Christ. And you got a new life. Your wife. Amen. Amen. Ephesians five verse. 25 and 26 will tell you about the sacrifice. Again, we're talking about the reasons God made marriage. And there's many of them besides these nine we're talking about. There's probably a thousand of them. But I'm only, only going to over nine because these are the ones that the Lord gave me to share. Share, excuse me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Ephesians 5, 25 and 26. Now, you got to ask yourself, husband, how many of y'all are willing to sacrifice for your wife? How many of y'all willing to sacrifice for your family? It come time, if it come down to it, and your mortgage is on the line, and your you know, you know, you know, utility is about to get cut off, somebody got to go out and work an extra shift or work some extra, you know, work an extra job. Is it going to be you, or are you going to expect your wife to go to? Hmm. Just saying. Why? So if it come down to it. And you got a wonderful career going on. Your husband has a wonderful career going on. And something happens where one of your kids has got to be at home. Somebody has to be at home to take care of one of your kids because they can't go to school or they can't be. You know, some, nobody, there's nobody else to take care of them. Are you willing to sacrifice what you work for to go be a, home, a housewife? Those are sacrifices. Those are the ones you're willing to make. You see, when you truly love the Lord, He's there every step of the way to make it to to his the love you have for him causes that delight in making that sacrifice. You don't regret it. It's it's just you know it's it's wonderful because you know the end goal what we're running the race for. You know it's for a crown of life. Smooth transition. Whenever, whenever the Lord's involved, there's always a smooth transition. That's, this is going to be always a smooth, complete road. No. God says, when you give your life to the Lord, there's going to be trials. It's going to be, as my brother Servant said, I'll go to Christ. When you, when you give your life to the Lord, you enlisted in the war. This is not no, I'm going to say, this ain't no cupcake game. This is a real live war. A real live spiritual war. And all the people out there that tell me it's all hunky dory and they don't have no problems, they ain't walking with the Lord. That's why. They're all fake, they're all lukewarm, and 
they ain't fighting against the enemies, that's why the enemy's not fighting against them. Think about it. You come, when you truly start to come against the devil, you understand that it's a war. Is he coming back? It was strength. Uh, do, we, do we have authority over him? Absolutely. Amen. But he's still coming. Trust me, he's still going to throw stones. He's still going to accuse because he's an accuser. He's still going to go to the Lord and ask, can I test him? Can I tempt him? Absolutely. And God going to say, absolutely. Because we have to be tested. We have to be tried by fire. The Bible says so, not me. I'm not saying this because it sounds good, because it makes me, you know, I'm going to get a thousand likes, because I'm probably going to get none. And that's cool, because I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to mm-hmm. spread the gospel. I want y'all to love Jesus. If you don't love Jesus, that's the problem. I don't I can care less if you don't love me. I'm, I'm nobody. Amen. Glory be to Christ. Nothing at all. Nobody at all. So like kids, now we want you to love Jesus. You want to come apologize to Hey, it's cool to apologize to me, but you need to take it to the Lord and apologize to him. I'm not the one that can put you in hell. <laughs> he is. I can punish you. I can put you out of my house. Hey, you want to go on some else and do the same thing? You truly, you truly ready to change? You give it to the Lord. Say, hey, Lord, I'm sorry. I mean, that's gonna make you change at home and not do it to us either. Yes, yeah, so, it's so a domino effect either way. You go domino the good way. You go domino the bad. Amen. All right, f- sacrifice. You got it. Give us a. Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-five and twenty-six. Mm-hmm. That's to be the Holy Book of Ephesians, uh, King James Version, and verse 26 says that he might sanctify, I mean, I'm sorry, 25 and 26. Mm-hmm. It says, 25 says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, mm-hmm. that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. word. The word will wash your marriage. It will sanctify your marriage. That's what that, that verse 26 is saying. He gave his life for the church but in the hopes that his word would sanctify us. Sanctify Amen. our marriage. Now again, all the brothers and sisters on here, brother Jason, and all the other married couples, y'all know that that don't mean your, your marriage is going to be hunky-dory all the time and perfect. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Sometimes y'all not going to like each other. Sometimes y'all not going to get along. Sometimes y'all going to disagree. One thing you can't do and you shouldn't do is go to sleep that the sun will set on your anger and your wrath. Because that's what the Bible says. Whatever you do, let it happen between the time God awake. I disagree, don't talk. And before you go to sleep, that's your heart. I love you, Lord, love you. I forgive you. I hope you forgive me. Let's wake up with something different in our life. Yep. Not me, that's the Bible. God said that. You don't want to die. Uh, you don't want to sleep angry. Amen to that. That's what God said. I didn't say that. I, I'm trying. I don't want to do it. Like, let me not put that on y'all. I don't want it. So I don't speak to nobody else. I can't. But I know I don't. My, my wife says she don't. So we try our best not to do it. I, I don't, it's been a long time since we had it. Yeah, I, I'm man. We got plenty of disagreements, but I, yeah, we don't go to that. My husband even pointed it out to me. I think I brought it up for, uh, at one time as a testimony. It's not just when you lay down at night to go to sleep, you don't want to take a nap with any type of disagreement on your mind because that's still going to sleep. I don't care if the sun is up or the sun is down. If you're taking a nap or in the in the midst of all that stewing, mm-mm. Especially with that, when it says don't let the sun set on your anger, say no. the sun is, is bright. When it goes down in the evening or at nighttime, it's dark, right? People think that's the only time that... It means the sun sets on your anger. No, if you close your eyes, the sun is setting because you can't, you no longer mm-hmm. can see the brightness. You're in the dark. Right? So, if you go to sleep in the afternoon, take a nap, the sun is still set in your eyes. And your anger is still in your heart. So, guess what? God forbid somebody die in that state. Take on hell. That's just reality. Thank you, Lord, for that spirit, Holy Spirit led nugget. I didn't even look at it like that. That's the truth. I thank the Lord for just giving it to me just now because that's not written down anymore. I just actually was thinking about it and the Lord said, Go on, share that right now. People understand when you go to sleep, your eyes, the sun is still set. You're not looking at it, you can't see it, you don't even know, you know it's there. If anybody's taking a nap during the day, that of course, unless, unless the sun is coming through the window right in your eyeballs, or you, you know, most of us cover the window, you know, people that have ever worked night shifts, we'll cover the windows up and it's just like dark. So you're letting, you're, you're letting the, the sun set on your right. And that's what you don't want to do. So this next one is one of all of our favorites. God made marriage for favor. Did he or did he not? Did Amen. He not, did he or did he not make it for favor? So 
we're going to turn to Proverbs 18.22. For anybody that has any type of marriage ministry or studied, has studied any type of marriage at all, you know that 18.22 is, should be on everybody's mind. You got to stand on God's word. And God said he only honors his word. So I say, Lord, you said he who finds a wife finds a good thing that obtains favor from you. So I need your favor, Lord. I need your favor for this job. I need your favor for you know, our house sale. I need your favor for paying the mortgage. I need your favor taking, you know, dealing with these kids. So I'm saying you got to talk to God and ask him. I mean, again, I got to do better at it too. I'm not just talking to everybody else. That's what we all need. We talk to God like he's our friend because he called us friends. So if you talk to him like you talk to your, your worldly friend besides, you know, of course, all the stuff we used to do, profanity and all those things, you definitely don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying now that we graduated from that, the spiritual things, we stand on his word and talk to him about his word, he don't have no choice but honor has no choice. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not going to not honor his word because he said he would. So I'm not, I'm not coming like I'm, I'm making a demand to God. I'm telling you, this is what you said, God. I didn't say it. God said, I'm going to be a favor. So I got a favor. And I want, I want I want him to show me that favor. Of course, we still got to be walking in his will in order to get that favor. Amen. So, that's just kind of, I've already read it, but you can read it again. Yeah, Sorry, I get a little excited sometimes. Right. But the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. Blow wherever he's going to blow. Amen. So 22? Mm -hmm. 18, 22. Let's read 21 first. We want you to know. Get out. Okay. Go. Look, not Go. On TV. Not on, You're not going to keep doing not in front that. Of the people, okay? No. Not in front of the people. I'm not tolerating it. Not today. She always copy nothing. I promise you, I was just, I was about to say, let's just go ahead. I was just going to make a statement. I wasn't even going to say, let's go ahead and read it. I was going to make a statement and say, I'll glory be to Christ. Speak life over your marriage. Amen. Well, let's just read. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Let me go ahead and read it. I like. It. <laughs> so this is what you gotta understand before you understand the favor. You gotta understand. You gotta understand what comes out of your mouth can cancel out favor. Yeah. Also can add favor depending on how you speak. It says, "Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof." Amen. So whatever you speak over your marriage, that's what you're gonna get. That's the fruit. My husband's a bum. He's lazy. He don't know what all he do is play Xbox. Maybe true. Might not want to say it. Might want to speak like Have a guy for your husband. He's going to get up and get a job. He's going to provide for the family. He's going to be a wonderful man to God. That's what you want to say. Now, Amen. Is it easy to say it sometimes? No. Not easy to see. It's not easy to say what you don't see. But God said, faith is the substance of things. Hope for them is the things not seen. So we, we have faith that our God is going to deliver our spouse or put them in a better position, we got to speak those things as, you know, as though they are. Amen. We're speaking the things that we see, we cancel out what we say we believe. Well, my husband's a bum, he's an alcoholic wino. If, if he is, he needs to be delivered. Lord, I believe my husband is delivered from alcoholism. I believe that he's a true man of God. I believe he's going to be a leader and, you know, winning souls for the king. I believe he's going to get favor with a job and get promoted quickly and be able to take care of the house. I can be a housewife like I want to be. Life, death and life in the power of the tongue. Amen. Next scripture says, Proverbs 18, 22 says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtain favor of the Lord. So he said, he didn't say when you get married, it's going to be a ball and chain, or it's going to be a headache, or she don't, she, somebody's going to get her, supposed to get on your nerves or make your life miserable. No, it says, he who finds a wife, finds a good thing. Amen. And obtains favor of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Enough said, enough read. So the next one, God made marriage for unity. You and I, T.Y. I'm not talking about the song here. No, it's Matthew 19 and 6. Actually, Lord bless us a couple years ago to do a live on the topic of unity. Get a chance to go back and watch it. We'll just study the topic of unity. You don't even have to watch ours. It's just, it's in the Bible. I mean, it's not like, like, I'm not trying to grow my YouTube channel or Facebook following and then like that. We're just trying to share the gospel. If you want to watch it, that's fine. If you don't, you study for yourself. Matthew amen. 19 and 6, amen. Sorry, I'm talking about. I'm not getting my wife a chance No, no, you're totally fine. I'm enjoying mm. this work. Mm. I'm not usually this long when it do but I am. The Lord is leading. There you Jesus. go. That's the Holy Spirit leads you. I'll talk about that for the Lord. 
All right, uh, Matthew 19, verse 6. I'm talking about uni. Um, let's read it. Look, Matthew, King James Version, verse 6. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Mm. Unity. You don't let your mom and your daddy, your stepmom and your in-laws tear you apart. Because they didn't put you together. God is the reason. I know I used to, I used to make this comment. Um, my husband, he, he's always, not always now, but then when we first got married. Because a lot of people thought that our covenant um, ceremony to where we were married before the Lord, we pleased the Lord first. And that took away a lot of that anxiety of trying to please other people. I had to understand it (laughs) and get to my head. But um, my husband, he would always wonder, like, if my family liked him or my dad liked him. I said, sweet, you didn't marry them. You married me. So if they don't, then, I mean, hey, they got to take that up a little bit. But the answer is they don't. So we moved on for that. (laughs) He's going to put it it out there like it is. It's okay, but I still love the Lord God. Yeah. It's not him that they don't like. It's the fact of whoever don't like. We feel like that. But we love the Lord, love everybody, and forgive anybody who's ever shown evil, done evil, whatever. We love it with the God, love of the Lord. Family or not, or stranger, whoever. It is, I always tell my husband, when other people, how can I put this, Holy Spirit, God, my words, other men that are not walking with the Lord, I don't want to use the word intimidate because that's witchcraft. They feel some kind of way to the point to where, okay, you know, uh, you know, they don't want to be around or whatever the case may be because it's not him, it's the Lord who dwells in him. When that light of the Lord shines, they begin to see their dirty garment. They don't want the dirty garment exposed. Not just men, <clears throat> but women too. Yeah. Y'all best to believe when you got a godly marriage, all glory be to Christ. Don't feel like they hating on you. They're hating on Jesus in your marriage. Yeah. Because Jesus is what keeps this together. They don't do intimidation. But they do fear the Lord does in us. The demons fear and tremble. That's yeah. the problem. They, they already know that they ain't living right. And the demons is in them. Know that they, they got to go sooner or later. If they get in the presence of the Lord, they got to go. They get, that's when they get irritated. I find every reason in the sun not to be around. So they don't make up stuff. They bring up stuff from old years ago. Uh, I remember you looked at me sideways. And, uh, I don't remember. I didn't remember looking at you. Yeah, that's the demons trying to find a way to get out of being in your presence. That's why you try to fight you. Or they're make you want to. Okay, you know, we don't, we're not confrontational, so we don't get it from leave. But again, I'm telling y'all, kingdom marriages and the marriages to be prepared for y'all in my name of Jesus. But understand, the kingdom marriages that are already within the bride, the enemy is always coming for your marriage. I mean, I'm not going to, of course, say any names. I mean, we forgive them and we love them. I have a family member that never met my husband ever once. I met him twice. And long story short, all of a sudden, again, it's not my husband and it's not me. It's Jesus who dwells in us. So anybody can get up and fuss and cuss and even threaten to fight or whatever they want to do. But you know what? You better remember Luke chapter 10, verse 19 and 20. And we don't glory in the fact that these we, these devils are subject to Jesus in us. We glory that our names are written in the Lamb of the Life. But you better know that you have power and authority. And the only way you can exercise it is if you're living right for the Lord wholeheartedly. Um, um, the, my husband's favorite saying would be like the seven sons of Stephen. Just because it's fear is what they fear. They don't fear us. There you go. Amen. Amen. A lot of people get, they get they're not in the presence of the Lord that's in us. They get irritated and demons know they gotta go. One way or the other. So they try to pick a fight or they try to do anything they can to get out of get out the presence presence of the Lord, not our presence. There you go. It's the presence of the Lord. That's how we know that we truly walk with the Lord because it's not any circles that we fit in. Not with my family, not with her family. I got, I love my sister to death, but she would not, for her life, be around me. She won't talk to me. She won't call me. Unless she wants something. 
she wants some money, she'll protect me. Hey, brother, can I borrow $20? I, I go eight months a year without hearing from her. I'll call her, won't get no response, and get sent to voicemail. And when she needs something, she'll come. With the demons that she's dealing with, she don't want to be around. So whenever we see her, the two times that we do, and she, she's ready to go. But that's, again, that's the demons that these people are dealing with. It's not yeah. them, it's not us. It's, it's just a spiritual war. You don't understand, everything happen, is happening in the spiritual realm. It has nothing to do with us. Once we give our life to the Lord and, and we are baptized in the Holy Ghost of fire, yeah, yeah, the Holy Ghost in us is what right. puts the fear of the Lord into these demons and these people that, that these people are filled with. Because it's not the people, it's the demons that we have a problem with. We don't hate anybody. But we, will come to, we will go to war with the demons. Amen. Our glory be to Christ, with Jesus who dwells in us, who give us the power and authority through his authority that dwells in us. Hallelujah. For the next reason that God made marriage was for our patience, to help us to develop patience. Not with just one another, but with other people. Your marriage will, will definitely sharpen your patience for others and for your spouse. Because that's the person you're supposed to have the most patience for. Sometimes it's the other way around. It's the one you have the least patience for because that's the person that you're around the most. So, you know, you feel like I'm comfortable now. I'm just going to let know you're getting on my nerves. There's no more, there's no grace, there's no. Hey, you're getting on my nerves. You're getting on my last nerve. And that's not how it's supposed to be. God wants you to have more patience with each other than you do with the total stranger. And these are Bible principles, not ours. We're not making them up. We still got to practice them ourselves. We're still sharpening our own, you know, walk with the Lord. When I feel like, when I feel like uh, that the enemy is trying to afflict, and because I even, I talk to my husband. If I, if I know that something is trying to afflict me, reason why I talk to him about it so he can pray for me because like I told him one time I said sweetie I feel like I've been I've been impatient with you like just you know been getting impatient and impatient with the kids I said that's not good I need to get in the closet and pray and of course yes he's going to pray for me and that uh, the prayers of the righteous evaded much because I knew what I need to be seeking the Lord for we need to pray for our spouse anyway that's what, another thing that Another principle that we learned, we also have a, we added in one of our Bible says you gotta we gotta pray for each other when, even when there's nothing going on because that's Dang. when you're storing up prayers. Man. It's just like it's like having a savings account. You're putting money in there for later, right? You want to store a prayer too because you don't want to wait till the time the disaster comes before you start trying to look for the disaster relief. Like the relief is in the prayer. If it's already stored up for your marriage when people start trying to attack, when the enemy try to come, when they send that ex girlfriend from 30 years ago. You ain't even had no idea where she was until last week. She just showed up at your job. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, trying to rekindle all the time. Remember, yeah, remember we used to, oh, yeah, remember behind the, oh, remember we used to go to the movies? Oh, no, we don't, I don't remember none of that. I'm happily married. Have a good day. It's nice seeing you, though. I pray it's not too late for you and your family. I pray that you, you know, that your life is blessed or whatever. All that getting into going down memory lane? No, nah, we're not doing that today. Well, that's just like when my husband, husband had an old co-worker, and we knew that the Lord allowed him to, to come, and we knew that he was, his father was of the devil. He already chose his side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he already chose his side. And my husband told me, see, we talk, we communicate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, such and such had another and another asked me, when he said, brother, you need to go to the strip club, brother. He said, I'm happy to marry. What I want to go to the strip club for? I got, I got all that you paying for, I get for free. I'm doing good. If I'm cheap too. No, I didn't go to the strip club when I was in the world that much. I'm going there and be like, You want to buy a drink? Nope. You want to, you want to tip a stripper? Nope. You got to go. Okay, well, I'll see y'all later. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to glamorize a strip club. I'm just saying, I was, I didn't do it when I was in the world. I'm sure, you're not going to do it when I'm happily married. That's, if I destroy my marriage for something that, that's, I'm, I'm not, that's not going over me anyway, but that's never made sense to me. But again, digress. Amen. The enemy, the enemy will, God will allow the enemy to send distractions. He will allow the enemy to send things to try to sow discord. The, the, the enemy will allow, God will allow the enemy to use your children to try to sow discord. Yeah. Anything, anything that will try to come between the marriage. The marriage is the most important thing. We're one. The Bible says we become one. That's unity. But the Bible also says that a house that's divided against itself cannot stand. So if us two are divided, the whole house is going to fall apart. Because then we're going to get to the point where I'm going to take, the kids going to say something, you know, one kid going to take one person's side, and then it be, becomes one side against the other. You know, now the, the, the enemy has his way because the door is open. When they're standing together, and you know, God being a third person in the middle, ain't no room for the devil. 
Mm-hmm. That's why you gotta get around, you gotta get on somewhere else. And they get irritated when they try to, people try to come against our marriage and it doesn't work. You know, my stepdad used to say, you just try to talk crazy about my wife, it's not gonna work. You can't turn me against my wife. Anything you wanna get us to pray for you and get them demons to come out of you. Or we don't say stuff that you, you know, we don't give it to you. We're gonna put you in the presence of the Lord and you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to flee. We're not gonna sit there and talk about my wife and think it's gonna work. It's gonna fly. And Lord knows, I forgive him right away. And I, I really, my heart really hurts for the rejection of the Lord. People rejecting the Lord. But I pray, you know, I pray it's not too late for him. My name is Jesus. But understand the enemy, people who don't serve the Lord and their fathers of the devil at that time, praying it's not too late for them. You know what time he would call and try to sow those bag of evil seeds? Right before marriage ministry or on the day we're supposed to do marriage ministry. A lot of times. You know that ain't no coincidence to me. But again, I love the Lord, love him, and I know who I'm dealing with. My battle is not with flesh and blood. It's against principalities and high places. And we're the instruments that the Lord has ordained and chose. All glory be to Christ, all the truth out of Christ, to be the instrument that takes down the kingdom of Satan. Because we're the manifested sons of God. Mm-hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And that's not on our account. The account of Jesus. Mm-hmm. You already know. Don't give me story. Don't get her started. Woo, don't give me story. <laughs> I'm messing with you. Come on, man. Oh, what you got? We got God, God made marriage for our patients. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Oh. We can use this one for unity as well. Yeah. I'm going to read on. I'm going to read on 2 through 6. It says, With all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love forbearing means you know, to be enduring that, that time she get on your nerves because of lowliness and meekness with long suffering so, okay baby I got it I understand okay that's cool I understand you're not a good mood I understand you got a rough day at work it's all right I'm here so pray to you that's what we that's, that's a praise and worship I just leave you alone until you know you're going to come that way how it works. But we have to have patience with one another. Patience. Understand. Forbearing. Amen. Amen. Verse 3 says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. So marriage is supposed to be happy. For the most part, it's supposed to have peace. Like, there shouldn't be a bunch of turmoil in your marriage. Because otherwise, you're not operating in this principle. Any, any biblical principle for that matter, because the Bible says we are supposed to be peace Amen. Amen. You come home and start World War III, my wife is not supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. Whatever the people at the job did to you, you need to leave, leave it at the job or take it out on them. I mean, if you got to do anything, I don't encourage you to do that either, because that's not a God and it's going to cost you the job. So I would just leave it to the Lord. And if the Lord fights your battle, like He said He would. Amen. So, but if you can't do that, definitely don't bring it home and take it out on your spouse and your kids. That's just, I mean, I found out. I haven't done it, but I've found out through a lot of other marriages that that doesn't work. It just makes things worse. Amen. Like, like we always tell that, like, we always, they have a saying about dogs, you, they don't want to, dogs don't ever usually want to use the restroom where they lay their head. Same thing with you, you don't want to start a war where you got to lay your head. It's not going to work out. Amen. All right, verse 4, verse 4 says, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope, your calling. Amen. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, one Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. One God. This is supposed to be in all the body of Christ. So we shouldn't be on, we should all be on one accord anyway. We should all understand the same marriage principles. We should all operate the same principles. All, all husbands, godly husbands should treat their spouses the same. I'm not saying the uh, same marriage should be a robotic, but I'm saying these principles should apply to, for every husband towards their wife and every wife towards their husband. They should have a godly marriage where they beat each other up, cuss each other out, because that's not a God. Mm-hmm. They say they walk with the Lord, they're lying. Because that's not how God operates. God is not in that marriage at all. Now, that doesn't mean God didn't put that marriage together. That just means they're not operating the principle. And God, the Holy Spirit, will depart. Amen. All right, the next one is for encouragement. First Thessalonians five and eleven. Look up 
that's known you. Oh, that's what I thought you didn't love me. I, I do. <laughs> My head is trying to free me. <laughs> I have a whole lot of black friends because y'all act up. Hey, did I say that out loud? I love you. Thank you, sweetie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sweating like a Hebrew slave, but it's all right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also do ye, also ye do. Amen. Amen. Comfort, edify, all that falls and ties into encouragement. Encourage each other, uplift each other, comfort each other when y'all in, you know, situations where they need to be comforted. All those things are parts of a godly marriage. There's no reason why your spouse is sitting there uncomfortable. Because, as the world says, what you want to do for your spouse, that other person will. You don't want to be, you know, be in a situation where your wife is going through something and you're trying to be hard and you know, being a jerk and she's going to work and the old dicks are coming along and you don't comfort her. I mean, now you got a problem. And now you want to kill Dexter because you're doing something that you should have been doing. Mm. So, don't let it happen. Don't open the door for the devil. You can't come in. Make no, say, give no place to the devil. Amen. Mm-hmm. Don't give him that legal ground. Amen. The final bullet point on the reasons God made marriage. So when Tyler Perry asks you again, why did you get married? To make sure you run it down to him like this. To cover each other. We are married to cover one another. For coverage. And you know, God God ultimately covers us. He is our ultimate covering, but on my wife's covering. And she covers me in prayer. That's what the, the Bible says the women are, women are usually the prayer warriors. So they cover us in prayer. Read Proverbs, read the book of Proverbs, chapter 31. It talks about how a woman prays in the middle of the night while the family sleep. Amen. So 1 Peter 4 and 8. Go ahead, Brother Corey. I'm going to read Jones. Mine, I know. 1 Peter 4 and 8 says, And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. I know what charity means. Translates to uh, agape love. You know what agape love is? Godly love. So there's another study that you, I would encourage you to do about different types of love. There's agape love, and there's eros love, and there is there's like four types of love. I don't know them all, but those are the two main ones: agape love and eros. Eros. That's where the word erotic comes from. That's basically like a lustful type of love. Um, I don't want to say lustful because Eros love is in your marriage as well. So it's like a, a human nature love. Agape love is God. It's godly love. It's, only, it's the love that only God has shown. Like John 3.16 says, For he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? That's the godly love. Amen. And we can have it. Too. The Holy Spirit, we can have agape love too. But we can't have it any other way. You know, if we're not filled with the love of the Lord, agape love is not there. It's not something that humans can, we can't fabricate or we can't, um, we can't produce agape love. Only God can give it to us. Amen. And we give it back to him and to our brothers and sisters in Christ and fellow men. Amen. Everybody. Even your enemies. You have to show that agape love to them too. Amen. Definitely you should it. want to. No, of course you want to. That's, that's how you know that. That's how you know that you truly changed. You're truly a new man. You're truly giving your life to the Lord. If you can love your enemies. Yeah. I was a brother on here, a, a gentleman on here. I don't want to call him a brother because I don't. I don't know his lifestyle. But I know. He said he walked with the Lord. But one thing that he said that threw me off was he said he doesn't believe in uh, loving your enemies. Ooh. That's what the Bible says. So you can't. If you can't come against God's word and then say you walk with the Lord, that doesn't make sense. God said Jesus said you have to love your enemies. This is not something that we're making up. Amen. I said love your enemies. <laughs> so whether I like it or not, I gotta love my enemies. And when I don't, I need to I need to get in the college and ask the Lord to help me to crucify this flesh because that's my flesh that wants me to, to not love my enemy. And that's gonna drag you straight to the pit of hell because Jesus said love your enemies. He said love your enemies and love your brothers. He said love everybody. He said how can you love somebody that you talk to and look at every day 
or somebody that you see physically, but you don't, you know, you, you say you love the Lord that you can't see, but you don't actually love these people that you can. That's easy. It's easy to love somebody that's in front of you. It's easy for me to, somebody that said they hate me, for me to say, it's okay, I still love you anyway. Now, again, there's a fine line of somebody trying to come in and rape and pillage in your house. No, of course, we're not going to well, we love you. you know, do what you have your way. No, that's not how that works. So, again, you have to have discernment and use some type of godly wisdom. As long as nobody's trying to harm my family, you know, you, your words don't matter to me. If you're saying you hate me, that doesn't, that doesn't move me more. Yeah, that's not going to make me hate you. If you're saying that I'm you know, X, Y, Z, that's not going to make me hate you. That's just, your, that's just more reason for me to pray for you. Yeah. We love the Lord, love him, and pray that whoever it is doing anything or trying to cause any harm, that, you know, they're able to be saved. Um, all in all, I just pray for the bride of Christ to have the the, the spirit of Brother Stephen. Because, right, you know, you can just imagine those heavy rocks, stones coming down on him, and then that final one that went for his head. And he uttered his last words. Father, forgive me. Lay it to the, not to their charge. I'm paraphrasing. But you understand. Lay it not to their charge. Last words. Forgiving the people who showed him evil. The people who took that big block and hit him in the head with it. And he fell asleep. Amen. So. <coughs> just know. The Lord will. He, When you pray for him to show you. And to, to, to actually to baptize you in agape love, his agape love, he would do it. You have to show him that you want it. Yeah, every day. But yeah. it's not a one-time thing. You got to do it every day. Because yeah. the world's going to test you. The devil's going to be able to test you. God gonna die. God's going to allow the devil to test you on all of these principles that you say you follow and believe. If you say you got agape love, you don't think God's going to allow you to be tested on that on a regular? That's not going to be something that's just one time. Or you pass the test, you're good now. No. Mm-hmm. So you leave this earth. I have my life to be tested. What was that? Was that Brother Wilkinson? He said, We live the life of affliction hmm. when we walk with the Lord. And, and you, how is our faith muscle going to get big if it's never exercised? Mm-hmm. What was that message? I actually want to share that, put that link into the comments so people can actually watch it. When he said that, I mean, like, it gives somebody walk with the Lord to give you a whole other life. Because when people think when you give your life to Jesus Christ, everything gets easier. Mm-hmm. Jesus' whole life was affliction. He said, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you are, you become just like Jesus. You, he said, that people that are buried with Jesus Christ will rise with him. But that means you also got to live like him. You're going to have to endure like he did. You're going to have to go through some of the things he went through. Of course, we know it's never going to be on the, the same level that Jesus went through because mm-hmm. he was the only one that could endure that type of physical punishment for any, you know, for that length of time and not. Most of us would have died before we got to the cross. Yeah. They started plucking out his beard and put the thorns on his head and he was bleeding profusely. Most of us would have died right then. We're talking about God in the flesh. He's the only one that could endure that, endure that much pain and suffering. Lip with sheep knuckles. You might want to put that in the comments because that, because of me, um, I'm not sure if you've shared that one before, but because of me, uh, my brother serving all glory be to Christ, uh, Revelation Jesus Christ Ministries, I, I never knew that. I'm going to say we were was, was beat with sheep knuckles to yeah. so slice the skin with a phalega the whip that's what he the servant broke down he just studied and broke down exactly what the it's called a phalegrum it's the thing that the Roman soldiers used to when they did crucifixions and they you know, they beat people fillet the skin and what they said it was so bad that they only could they only could give up to 39 lashes because after that the person would die they wanted to get they wanted to get him close to the brink of death but now that I'm not. So they think I'm nursing back to health and maybe do it again. I don't know. But imagine getting 39 lashes with the thing that rips your flesh open all the way down to the, at the muscle and close to the bone. Ripping, ripping muscle off the bone. And it's just so, like when he, when he went through that sermon, it was like, like everybody lost it. I was like, I don't, I don't know how people didn't cry if they watched that message. Like, you think about all the stuff he went through for you. For me, not because of anything he did, but because of everything we did, everything that we were going to do. Like this stuff, we hadn't even done anything yet. We weren't even thought about. But he did before for, for, for things that we were going to do. And even stuff that we're going to do from this point forward. So, but every time you get ready to do something, think about what he had to go through. That, to me, that helps me to even more to stay away from sin. Because 
that's the reason why he had to be crucified again. So I'll share the I'll share it in the video in the, I mean, in the comments. If you want to watch it, that's fine. If not, I think it's something everybody should watch. It's kind of like a a sermon on you know, like uh, what's that movie called? The, the Passion of Christ. Except you don't actually get to physically see what's happening. But it's, the description is almost like you're seeing it. You can see it in the spirit. And if you walk with the Lord and you see it, like if it doesn't hurt your heart to see that our Lord and Savior went through that because of us, like, I don't know. Like, you got a real close, uh, absolutely somebody close to reprobate if they don't. If that don't move you somewhere, my Lord. I don't know what to tell you. Mm -hmm. But, hey, for bless the word. I'm glad y'all joined us. Thanks, Thanks for this word. Glad we were able to get it done. I mean, we had been talking about it for a while, but the Lord has not, it's been holding it up for a reason. There's a couple other messages God has been holding up because we had other things to do. I mean, we hadn't studied enough to, to share it. So, like, we don't just jump on whenever we want to. We jump on whatever the Lord says. So. Now, I'm not here to get more followers or more likes. Or, it could be two people to view it. I can care less. And, as long as they, if they get something out of it, that's great. 2,000 people can watch it and not get nothing. Sometimes that, people understand it doesn't matter how many people watch it. It matters the ones that the Lord wants to touch. Amen. So, pray for all the marriages of anybody that's watched this and go back and study this and truly try to exercise these principles. Husbands, it starts with us. Like, we can't we can't talk about our wives until we do everything we're supposed to do. How the husband want to get more? They want to do like Adam and point the blame at the woman. No, God going to come to you first. Mm -hmm. You're not going to come to your wife. If your house is in disorder, you're not going to come to your wife and say what's going on. You're not going to say, what did you do that you weren't supposed to do? Or what did you not, you know, what did you not uh, implement or, you know, what did you not, you know, exercise the right authority or do what you're supposed to do as a man? What did you not do? Mm -hmm. You're not going to come to the wife and say, well, your husband said you made the decision. But no, you're, you're the head of the house. The, the final decision should go through you. And if it's not, I need to take that to the Lord. So I don't care what y'all say about the woman being a better decision maker or any of the other stuff. It's not that's not biblical principle. That's not a house in order. That's God's words. That's not my words. God said I'm the head. I'm supposed to be accountable for whatever goes on. That means I need to be in every decision that's made. Now if I decide not to say something and it goes wrong, that's on me. That's not on whoever made the decision. Yeah, that's true. It's my word. I mean, that's not me making that up. Trust me. Sometimes I want to say, Lord. I don't want that responsibility with somebody else. God said, I put you, I made you a man for a reason. Take it or leave it. There's no change in genders. That doesn't, that doesn't change the fact that you're a man. The world wants to try, wants to brainwash you into thinking that you can change your gender and everything changes. No, God still sees you as a man if you're created as a man. He still sees you as a woman if you're created as a woman. How many hormones you take or whatever you do. When you stand before God, he's going to say, I created you as a man. Why are you not what I created you to be? Man, my Lord. Yeah, this may get, this video may be even taken down at this point because I just said something I shouldn't have said, but that's that's what the Lord led me to say, and that's the Bible principle. I don't care less what Facebook thinks or anybody else. If they block it, if they shut down the page, oh well, I, I love y'all. Just let just know that I love y'all. I may not see y'all again, go to TikTok or Instagram or somewhere else we can talk again. If they shut that down, hey, see me in the streets. Well, the thing of it is, it's not something that you shouldn't have said. It's something they didn't want you to say. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. What I mean, they think I shouldn't have said. Not right. that I wasn't right. It's the truth. It's biblical truth. Yeah. They know, you know, they censor everything that's true. Of course. That's how you know who the real ones are. Because if you ain't been blocked on Facebook, you ain't had you know, what they call Facebook jail, you ain't got violated, you ain't walking with the Lord. You ain't talking about nothing. You're talking about everything that they want, they want you to talk about. You start telling this biblical truth. Oh, yeah, you violated, violated, uh, you know, that was it called community standards. I don't know how many videos we didn't have taken off YouTube. Telling the truth, like they try to say, "Oh, come get medical information, uh, misinformation." But everything that we tell you, you can go look it up. Like it's true. Like why was how's the medical misinformation? If I tell you that forty-five percent of people will die from the flu, that's a medical fact. Just tell me you can look it up. But it's a violation for me to say. Okay, so I'm not a doctor, but I'm okay. saying exact same thing. Doctor would say. But either way, that's neither here nor there. Let the Lord love you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Blessed be the very soon coming of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. He's coming soon, whether people want to believe it or not. Of course. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Everybody think that, you know, it's, it's a downtime right now. It's the calm before the storm. Although, the whole C-19, you know, it's almost in the past now. No, it's not. It's just, they're just in the background doing stuff that you, get, that you, that you don't know they're doing. They put it out piece by piece, but people aren't paying attention to I me. Mean, 
Well, some Bible thumpers or some conspiracy theorists. When we start talking about it, oh, they think we're crazy. It's okay, even our own family can that, so I'm, I'm okay with it. But the day when people stand before God, Brother Derek Prince, or Brother David Wilkinson said, it's the worm that never dies. Yep, the blood will be on our hands. The Bible says there's a worm that never dies when people get to hell. And that worm is all these warnings that you've been given, all this information that you were you were provided with that can save your soul. But you chose not to listen. All these people that want to say, well, don't, you can't say that somebody can't be happy being with the same sex. That's not your call. It's not. The Bible says that. And I'm just telling you what the Bible says. God has the final say. And I can assure you, he's not going to change his mind. Either way, like I said, I'm just somebody talking. My brother Sarah said, I'm just I'm just like John the Baptist crying in the wilderness. Amen. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. We thank you for this word, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful Bible study. We pray that the seed is not taken up. Thank you for the Holy Spirit operating through this this platform. Uh, Lord, we pray that if this message is meant to stay up, Lord, that you shield the enemy from being able to take it down. If it's meant to be taken down, that's where we is able to see it before it's taken down. So to get your word, Lord, and to get that healthy fear of you and to seek you daily and to seek the truth for their marriage, for their own walk, for their kids, and forever. This Bible is the basic principle before leaving earth. Basic, basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what the Bible is. It gives you basic instructions on how to live. And we pray that everybody will open it up and, and understand this truth and live by it. We yes. give you all the honor and praise. I thank you for my wonderful God, for him, Proverbs 31 wife, and for a wonderful house, a wonderful family. Pray for all of them. It is not too late for to be saved. We give you all honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Shalom. I love the Lord. I love you guys. I'm blessed to be the rock. Blessed to be the coming of the Lord. I love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Have a blessed day. Hopefully, we'll be back soon. I'm about to seek the Lord on some of the other Bible studies that I got to get done. And hopefully, it'll be soon. Lord willing. Love y'all and have a blessed evening.